Hello and welcome to Crits and Coffee. My name is Barely Caffeinated, the host and dungeon master for this campaign of Fandelver and Below, Shattered Obelisk. In addition to this adventure, we will also be playing the Lost Mine of Fandelver adventure. However, I will be changing some of the story elements as a couple of my players have already played through the campaign. Some additional rules we'll be playing by include a level 1 feat, high ground rules, cover rules, and stacking advantage and disadvantage. Without further ado, sit back, relax, and enjoy a cup of coffee. Hello and welcome to Crits and Coffee. I am Barely Caffeinated, the host and Dungeon Master for tonight's session of the Shattered Obelisk. Uh, before we jump in, I would like to quickly introduce my players. Uh, first off, we have Baka Zombie. Ooh, I'm going first. Hello, I'm Baka Zombie. Um, happy and feel, f- feel free to do any plugs as well. Okay, any plugs. I was wondering if we're plugging it <laughs> Yep, yep well. sorry, I forgot to specify that. <laughs> With that Good being start. Said, <laughs> uh, if you guys want to see uh, more of me, be sure to go follow me on Twitter at ZombieBaka. Or if you want to see me DMing uh, over on the YouTube channel, channel Swindler's Den, I'm running a game called Glory of the Giants, a homebrew game based in Faerun. Yeah, definitely lots of fun. You should check it out. Uh, next up, I believe we have Dr. Phage. Oh, hello. I'm Dr. Phage, or Adam. Um, you can find me on Twitter at also on Swindler's Den. I play games over there, and I'm on Gluttony and Earth, which um, Bubble will probably talk about more. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> uh, next up, we have Kyle. Oh my god. I'm not last for once. <laughs> <laughs> I am Kyle. You can find me over at your mom's bed um yeah you can't find me anywhere i don't i don't like social so don't follow kyle and last and certainly not least we have bumble scum hey it's your boy bumble scum uh i am a gm and designer i run the interdimensional library uh which our current show is gluttony and earth which is a 5e campaign in a a world built upon my players' backs, their blood and their sweat, uh, which Baka, Adam, and Kyle are all (laughs) players in. Um, Yeah, otherwise you can find me on most social media as uh, Bumblescum. Hey. Yeah, definitely go check out the IDL. I've loved listening to it so far, um, and I gotta catch up on the more recent episodes, so. Anyway, Uh, Jumping into our story. About three days ago, our party met at the Iron Flagon Inn in Neverwinter, meeting a patron by the name of Gundren Rockseeker. He was looking for adventurers to help escort him to Phandalin as he had discovered uh, something great, not only to uh, pay the party with, but also their many generations to come uh, just pouring out wealth of this discovery. Uh, Not only did he hire these adventurers, but also is escorted by his good friend Sildar Hallwinter. Um, At this time, as you can see, we are on the road traveling to Phandalin uh, with a two, supposed to be ox-drawn cart, Gundren at the front, Sildar next to him, uh, in a nice autumn day uh, with the Sword Coast to our east side, sorry, west side, already starting that, the west side, um, splashing against the coast as these autumn leaves are falling to the ground. Uh, Let's go ahead and introduce Kyle's character first. Oh, shit. So... Just race, class, maybe a short description. Okay. So, Amaris, the sorcerer of the party, she has... I would like... I tried my best to make her color peach-ish. I'm not the greatest with colors, as you can see. But she has a peach-colored hair with this soft lavender skin... And 
her horns, I couldn't do well with Hero Forge, but she has two two large horns. But there's also a set of two smaller horns beside it, making it look like a crown almost of horns. And the horns are gray and white. And she's just be- wearing a green turquoise-ish dress <laughs> with an apron and some pink and blue uh, was a word accents. And I will would you like me to do an action or do something? Sure, if you like to. Okay. I will hunch over and whisper towards the person in front of me. Oh, oh my gosh. Aren't you excited? It's, this is going to be so fun. Oh, I, I can't wait. And sitting in front of you is Dr. Phage. Uh, Dr. Phage, go ahead and tell us a little bit about your character. So we have a second tiefling, um, Mal. Um, in contrast, though, Mal has um, light to medium uh, green skin, almost like goblin or ha- uh, half orc in coloration. Um, very dark. Um, or black tattoos that like fill up almost all of his hands and goes up to his uh, elbows about. He has uh, back swept horns, uh, black that end with uh, green tips, kind of a fading into green at the end, and has a silly little black um, faux hawk mohawk situation that also has green dye fading at the end of it. Um, and he leans over and goes, uh, yeah, I mean, this is this is pretty exciting. I mean, like, we're gonna we're really gonna do, like, some cool, good things here. I'm like, it's gonna be super cool. Very good. And sitting in the corner of the cart, all alone, is Bumblescum's character. Go ahead and tell us about your character. Yeah, not quite alone, because I am sitting directly behind Gundar. Uh, <laughs> but Gundar. I am playing Shadow, uh, which is this tall, lanky, dark figure uh, wrapped head to toe in dark, tattering uh, bandages that almost seem like they're dissipating, like creeping shadows dissipating from his his visage. And he is there uh, uh, looking outside, out, leaning against the, uh, uh, the cart, looking out towards the forest, forest to... Uh, possibly spot anything that might um, be interesting on the trip or or um, dangerous even but uh, kind of just ignoring the chattering behind him mostly yeah very good um, and so far your guys's uh, journey has been pretty peaceful within these past three days and you know, sometimes you bring yourself to wonder why is it that he hired this many adventurers for what seems like a pretty easy journey. Um, and while you guys are continuing on, Gundren uh, just kind of says, Oh, I was really hoping to get a, another person to go with us. I can't find any honest people to work anymore. Um, and he and Sildar just kind of keep going back and forth, bantering about, you know, the younger generation not working and um, things of that nature. Um, and at this time, uh, our camera zooms out and we go into a forest. Which, this is just theater of the mind. But uh, in this forest, we see a... Um, well, Baco, why don't you go ahead and uh, tell us a little bit about your character a little bit. Uh, we see a figure crashing through the underbrush, uh, running at top speeds, bounding over uh, logs that have fallen. Uh, it's trying to get away from something. Uh, it's a bottom half. It's kind of like a 
deer-like figure, um, the short brown dark fur uh, with the tail up and alert. Um, but at the where the deer's head should be is a humanoid torso uh, wearing uh, tattered leathers and like a ripped up short cape uh, as she carries a long uh, staff that's made out of like petrified wood with dark te- uh, vines wrapping around it. Um, you can see through her uh, very pale white skin, uh, these her black uh, veins uh, kind of trying to pump blood as, as much as they can through her body as she's running. Um, panic looked on her look on her face. She has like a black and green uh, caked and cracked uh, paints on her over her eyes, uh, and it almost looks like uh, black stains of tears uh, that had been uh, stained to her face over many many uh, times of crying. Um, and these short or not short, but uh, thin, brittle black antlers uh, that seem to have rot running through them as well. As she rushes through the underbrush. Yeah, and as you're running through this forest, um, you would recognize that goblins are chasing you right now. Um, go ahead and make an acrobatics or athletics check for me. Oh, both amazing. <laughs> Actually, my thoughts is not awful, uh, but my rolls are a 10. A 10. Uh, So as you are running forward and you go to leap over this log in front of you, uh, catches your back hoof and you smash to the ground as one of your antlers chips off um, and these goblins are quickly approaching you. Is there anything that you do? Um, I am going to cast Entangle behind me to try and get the vines to start reaching up and grabbing the goblins as they come after uh, before she gets up and continues to run. Okay. Yeah, and as you do so, uh, they begin to uh, lob arrows at you to the best of your ability, uh, the best of their ability, uh, just lobbing arrows in your direction. Uh, one of them actually catching you in the back leg as you're running forward. And as you do so, you run out of the brush and in front of this cart. Kind of skid to a stop. Uh, just all of this. Um sensory uh, happening she's running from one danger and then finds herself in front of some new doesn't know if it's danger or not Um, all of this uh, adrenaline catching up to now uh, more fright and the pain of this antler snapping off uh, like a a drip of this tarish black goo coming out of where it broke off uh, before her eyes roll up into her head and she has faints from all of this all the sensory overload that suddenly came about her. And as you faint, I'm going to take us back over to our landing page here. Uh, And I think this music's going to restart. But that's okay. Um, And as you faint, uh, Gundren pulling the ox just inches from you, um, steps off of the cart and uh, begins to inspect you and just kind of uh, brushing through his beard and uh, brushing his hair, trying to figure out, uh, well, one, what happened to you and uh, what are you? Uh, Is there anything else the other characters would like to do? Uh, I I think with the commotion as it's happening, I think I would immediately pull out my bow and at least like prep it. So if anything would to come near dangerously, I could easily just shoot at it uh so it's not like approaching us okay so what about the rest of you i mean with all the commotion i would just peer out from the cart itself i wouldn't really exit if it be okay what about mail Mal does um, kind of see this uh, centaur of sorts uh, collapse in front of there and Gundren getting out, like, vaults out behind Gundren, like, on his heels and then, like, crouches down. like, well, we, we, gotta, we gotta help him. We gotta see, are they, are they okay? We gotta, what's wrong with them? Are they okay? I gotta, and just, like, going down and seeing, like, is, are they dead? Like, what is the situation? Uh, why don't you go ahead and give me a medicine check? Okay, 
That is a 14. 14. Um, you can tell that she she's injured. Uh, she's still breathing, so you don't think that you know she's dead or anything like that, but definitely uh, frightened, lots of adrenaline, uh, and just passed out. You do see that there's an arrow sticking through her right back leg uh, as she was caught by an arrow, however. Um, and go ahead. I, like, as I'm crouched down, just like <coughs> very gently, like, slap her face a little bit, like, are, are, are you okay? Are you, are, you, are you okay? Are you okay? Do you want me to pull out the arrow? Are you awake? Can you hear me? Um, Baka, go ahead and roll me a d4. <laughs> it's a one a one okay um and as you're kind of prodding at this uh centaur um gundren just i well we've been traveling for a few days now so why don't we set up camp for the night and uh i'll make some uh, tide me overs for you. Some nice dwarven culinary. Um, as he begins to set up uh, fire and, um, you know, things of that nature. And um, all of you remember back to at the Iron Flag and Inn, uh, Gundren just being very welcoming of all of you, um, being very kind, you know, paying for your drinks for that night, paying for your food, uh, and just, just a really genuine and sweet guy. Um, and you guys begin to set up camp for the night after being startled from whatever just happened. Um, is there anything you guys do during camp and during night? Uh, I think um, being like the bulkier one, I would probably be helping a lot with the actually setting up everything. Probably more so than, than like Amaris. Um, and otherwise, I'd probably be like leaning against a tree, like when the fire is going. Uh, keeping an eye out with my bow next to me, just trying to make sure that nothing sneaks up on from either side, since we know that goblins are in the area and ready to assault. Okay. Mal um, is doing a lot of the, like, not sure how to help, so just, like, hovering next to people as they're doing things and, like, oh, uh, 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 okay, okay. Um, and then checking in on the centaur as the night is going on as well, just to see how they're doing. Um, he's still not sure if the arrow should be removed or not. So just like keeps crouching, like looking at it and like, mm, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if I should do this or not. And just like reaching out for it. It's like, mm, I'm just going to leave it. I'm just going to leave it. I'm just going to leave it. Um, Amaris would try and make um this mystery centaur as comfortable as possible so she would just use her bedroll to elevate their head give them something soft to put their head on uh, and doing that she'll rip a piece of her, her skirt off if there's water nearby she'll dampen it and just put it on their head and then pat pat their head Okay. Um, and as the hour kind of rolls by, um, Fania, you, you begin to wake up to the smell of these uh, decadent uh, pork and beef meatballs. Um, and you can smell some allspice in there and uh, just just these wonderful smelling meatballs and uh and a bowl of rice as well as your your uh nose begins to pick up on these smells um and in front of you uh you can see that this dwarven man is already at the ready holding out this bowl of food for you to take she gets the sense first and like then suddenly the panic kicks in again of what she was doing before she fainted and like tries to get up, but the pain in her leg and her antler uh, keep her down uh, as she like tries to right herself a little bit and looks around at all the people that are 
around her. Who, who are all of you? Hey, friend. We, uh, we mean you no harm. We, uh, we were on our way to Fandolin when you stumbled in front of our cart. Um, why don't you en- enjoy some of these tide me overs and maybe we can help you out and he'll kind of beckon to the rest of you to join him at the campfire um, as he's handing out these bowls of um, tide me overs. She like slowly use her staff to get herself up onto three legs, like one leg kind of uh, holding it off the ground uh, from the arrow being in it. Uh, kind of gingerly touches her antler where it broke off and winces at the pain of that uh, before uh, hesitantly taking the food and trying it slowly. Um, uh, uh, I'm Mal. I wasn't sure if I'm not super great at like uh, healing type things, so I didn't take the arrow out. Should we take the arrow out? Do you know of that stuff more? Um, yeah, very, uh, uh, reluctant like pulling back from anybody that talks to her uh, but uh sees you aren't trying to harm her and trying to help uh kind of holds the leg up a little bit if you can get it out i can seal it up i can i can try okay ready one two three uh go ahead and make me a sleight of hand Um, that is a 22 sleight of hand. Yeah, so surprisingly, uh, you know, you pull this out with uh, a good amount of ease and dexterity uh, to where Fania doesn't, you know, feel too much pain. Obviously, it hurts, but uh, it makes it a little bit more bearable. A little bit of this black ichor comes out of it again, and she uses cure wounds uh, to seal it. No, I have no need for it. You okay. want it, you can have it. It's like tucks it into their belt. Um, and you see this older human man uh, approach you. Hello, my name is Sildar. Uh, I was the captain for the Griffin Calvary of Waterdeep, and uh, that's that's quite a wound you got. I know magic helps to seal it up, but we should probably still get you to Fandolin so we can get you some uh, extra care for your injury. You wanted me to go to to a town? It's it's a small village. They're all wonderful people there. like ears kind of wiggle back and forth in contemplation um, they must seem very nice it wouldn't hurt I guess to uh, at least travel safely for a little bit it, yes it would be better safe than sorry uh, and who knows what else lurks in these woods um, for the rest of us I think we should set up some sentry throughout the night just to be extra cautious. Uh, I, I can take the first watch. Um, is there anything you guys do before either heading off to bed or any other um, conversation you guys would like to make throughout the night? Vania wouldn't be getting like super close to anybody. Um, she mostly finds like a tree that's close enough to the light of the fire where she's still kind of in darkness, uh, where her antlers would help her blend in while she stands sleeping. Uh, and she would offer to do second watch since she can't sleep for a continuous eight hours uh, anyway. So. Well, okay. then I suppose that means I'd be the one taking the third watch. I can see in the dead of night pretty well, so I'll be able to check this out for us. Are, are there 
Are there three or four watches? Four? Yeah, we could do, okay. what, two, four, six, eight? Two, two, or four two-hour watches each? Um, I could take, I could take the, uh, the last watch then. I'm used to getting up pretty early, so that should be pretty easy for me. All right. Uh, and you guys spend the night, um, going through these watches, um, Sildar taking the first watch and nothing happens. Uh, Fenya, even though you're new to this group, uh, you still decide to take a watch. Um, and sometimes you can hear things off in the forest. Um, that maybe startle you a little bit, but with your uh, ears, you can detect that they're not too close to you. Uh, they're not close enough to where you should be waking people up. Uh, as you switch for the watch with Shadow, uh, Shadow, you, throughout your time, uh, reminisce on your time together with Gundren uh, and Sildar, who had actually suggested to Gundren that you join them in this adventure. Um, and you feel a really strong connection to Gundren uh, as he even though uh, through your appearance, no matter what, he's always been very caring um, and kind and compassionate to you, uh, regardless of the situation. Um, and Mal taking up the last watch. Uh, again, thankfully a pretty peaceful time and nothing really going on during that time. Uh, and at this time we'll return back to our carriage ride. At this point, you guys are roughly two days out from Fandolin. Um, and uh, again, at this point, it's still a pretty peaceful journey. Um, Gundren uh, does pipe up, though. Uh, and Shadow, since you're kind of sitting near him. Uh, so, uh, friend, uh, what... What were you doing before this? Well, I was mostly making me tend, uh, doing odd jobs here and there. Hmm. I usually take the jobs that other people don't want, as long as people don't ask questions. I don't ask questions either, I suppose. Well, that's... that's very noble of you. I... I certainly appreciate your help, friend. Uh, well, you... The one who's willing to, uh, make me make sure I make my meat send as a friend to me as well. And, uh, you, friend, in the, the back. Uh, and he, uh, kind of turns around and looks at you, um, Amaris. Uh, what, what brings a, uh, a lady like you on this adventure with us? Oh, it sounds so fun. I was honestly just so bored at, at my home every day <laughs> but this this is an adventure I needed hey, that, that'd be a noble cause and it is quite wonderful to get out into the wilderness like this you friend uh, and he'll look back at you Mal what about you um, I, uh, I just, I needed a change of scenery from where I grew up. So I just decided, you know, I'm going to pack up, going to do some different things, just really put some distance between me and where I grew up. Just felt like the right thing to do. I, I get that. Me and my brothers, when we were younger, Thardin and Nundro, uh, used to bicker quite a lot and... Uh, at one time, Nundro, uh, threatened to run away, and, uh, I'm glad he didn't. I have grown quite fond of him. Um, and you guys continue down this carriage ride for, uh, still quite a few hours. Uh, roughly about eight hours or so, so into, uh, the afternoon again. Is there anything you guys would like to talk about, uh, throughout this carriage ride? Um, I think 
Bainio would be like walking next to the cart, probably near Mal, uh, since he's been the kindest to her so far. Um, and she'll just kind of, uh, what is it that you're all doing? Why are you all traveling together? Oh, um, so we've been hired, uh, and like motions to Amars and Shadow and himself, we've been hired to help um, Gundren and Sildar, and they're hunting for treasure? They found that's... something, yeah. Yeah, they, they, they found something that's super cool, I'm assuming super old, and we're here to help them protect it. Just something? Um, so, and like whispers this part, Gundren, like, he hasn't really told us what it is. He's being pretty secretive about that part. So like, I don't exactly know him um i mean uh, he's been pretty nice to us so like I, I have no reason not to trust him what what was what was chasing you yesterday do you know the blight spreaders the goblins were chasing me Spell, um, problems for your force here like it did mine if they've come here. Okay. Okay, gotta, gotta look up scanning the tree line too so she's out of the cart. I, I think this... Shadow is like s subtly like it, when when this topic's brought up is like subtly like listening in. Uh, or like more talking about his conversations but uh, not trying to inter interject in there at all just listening in Omar would be humming with the birds <laughs> chirping around having the time of her life why is she so happy all the time she's just kind of always been like that I mean, I've known her, we've known each other for a while. And, like, she's just always been real. She's had a real good outlook on life. You know, one of those types of people. That's good that she hasn't had anything to change that outlook. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Uh, and you guys have these conversations for a while. Um, and as the night, uh, begins to rise and the day begins to fall, um, you guys stumble across a dark figure standing in the middle of the road. Uh, I'm going to pull us over to this other map here. Uh, can you guys all see your tokens? You can see everything just to make sure. Double check. Yes, I do. Um, and I'm going to go ahead. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and let you guys place your tokens where you think you would be. Um, they're more than, um, you know, happy to have you guys join in on, you know, sitting in the wagon or walking as you feel like you need. So, um, yeah, we can't move until we the can't, game yeah, is Oh, sorry. I forgot about that. If we see a figure, <laughs> I, I will step up uh, in front of like the horses and we're slowing down here. Okay. I uh, will be right here. I don't know where I am. Right here. <laughs> Good. Um, and as I mentioned, as you guys approach the this road and you see this dark figure standing um, in the middle here, uh, and hopefully you guys can all see her. I can. Um, yes, yes, yes. You see this. Uh, you can very clearly tell that she is a drow with... Uh, this long black hair uh, and pointed ears and she's in this very dark garment um, and she says well 
Finally, my new uh, partner, Gundren Rockseeker, has arrived. Uh, who, who are you? Uh, and he will uh, step off of the cart and walk a little bit forward. I, I'm, I'm sorry. Do I, do I know you? Well, you don't know me, but I, I do know you. Um, and as she says this, she beckons over to the tree line, and two more dark figures come out, and they are holding. Um, a smaller figure than them with a burlap sack over its head. Um, and she says, Now, Gundren, we can do this the easy way or we can do it the hard way. And she pulls this burlap sack uh, off of this figure's head, re revealing Gundren's brother, uh, Tharden. And uh, I am going to start us an initiative. You don't have to do any combat things, but just to kind of manage the chaos for what is about to ensue. Uh, are you guys able to see the combat tracker? Um, no. yeah, I mean, you have to click is that the small flowing box at the left? Uh, mine looked like two swords uh, on the navigation thing. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yes. Um, and you can roll physical, or you can tell me, hopefully. Oh, you can input, okay. I also got 14. Oh, I can edit it. No. What's your dad's? Uh, plus one. Oh, okay, wow. Yeah, plus two. Yeah. Fabio's <laughs> stats aren't great. I got a 22. Oop. I see some names. <laughs> see some names? <coughs> that's all right. Of the creatures. Look oh, here. that's okay. Um, Wait a second. There's a few names on here that <laughs> aren't on the screen. <laughs> that I can't see. Shadow, what did you roll? Uh, I got a 14. Okay, so if I roll it. I got, long I... I got shot on it. <laughs> Ooh, I guess this might be one thing I don't know. Uh... Oh, it just put me at a 17. I don't know why. Should I just roll on? Yeah, maybe just roll on Foundry for me, because okay. I... Oh, never mind. Okay, I find it. I find I change it. Shadow, you said yours was fourteen. Yeah. Okay. Everyone, so, and Amaris was twenty-two. Twenty-two. Damn. I'm gonna be first, and I'm not gonna do anything about it. <laughs> okay. And hopefully that doesn't mess anything up. I think we're good. Okay. Uh, so, Amaris, you see this stuff kind of unfold, uh, and you find yourself being able to uh, act a little quickly. Is there anything you do in this time? Amaris, excited for this adventure ahead of her, hearing that um, they have a potential new member, she'll rush up in rush up to the front of the car and exclaim oh, are you are you gonna come with us oh sorry uh did i accidentally delete you bumbus guy i think so because I, I, yeah, I, I disappeared in the middle of all this sorry i heard you and okay go ahead and place yourself where you were i think you were a little bit ahead of him sorry about that All right, uh, Amaris, is there anything else that you do? No. That's All right. Um, and this drow lady um, says, 
Gundren, I really think you should come with me. And Gundren begins to walk forward towards uh, this drow woman. Um, and that will be her turn. This one on the right side is holding the uh, bagged uh, person. Mal, what would you like to do? Um, I am not sure. <laughs> <laughs> think I will just move up next to Gundren and I'm gonna ready in action if anyone um, makes an attack against us and within range I'll just uh, take a little stab okay uh Fania do you do anything during this time has moved behind the cart out of fear. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna use the dodge action. Because I don't know what's going on here. I don't know much about these people or why this... I mean, obviously they have somebody that they care about. But I don't know why he's just walking over there. So yeah, right now I'm gonna take the dodge action kind of be behind, behind the cart. Okay. Shadow. So, so, um, his, Gundren's brother, what, what was his name? Uh, Tharden. Do they just have him, do they have, like, a, do they have, like, a knife against his, well, I know he was, like, tied up, I didn't know what, if they were, like. Yeah, uh, so this either. one, this drow has a knife up against his throat currently. Now what do you think you're all doing here? You bunch of dozers coming in here, taking hostages and whatnot. And then he's gonna like move up towards this area. Um, actually, no. Um, he's he's gonna just gonna move up to this spot here, uh, just like following Gundren as he's like trying to go there to like be uh, muscle for to back them up. Okay. <laughs> um, and we are back up at the top. Amaris, is there anything else you'd like to do? Reading the room. <laughs> Seeing Fania uh, scrape and hide in the back, seeing everyone being tense, she is going to say, um, <clears throat> uh, to, we, we, we don't, we don't need to do this right now, right? Um, um, and she is going <sighs> okay i've never done this before panic firebolt <laughs> <laughs> okay who are you firebolting the one that is holding the Hostage. Holding third in. Okay. Yes. Go ahead and roll to attack. How? Is it a roll to attack? How do I yeah. get to my spells? So if you you, you uh, there's like that tab on the side of them, like you can just click on you just bring up your character sheet by clicking on your guy in the initiative. Got order. it. See it. Um, yeah, and then in the in the chat, you'll have to click attack, and then if that hits, then you can hit damage. Okay. The 
does a 13 hit? A 13 will unfortunately miss as you shoot this firebolt uh, and it just kind of sidesteps. Uh, you were really close, uh, but it just sidesteps. Um, is there anything else that you do? It wasn't me. I duck into the... <laughs> I, it I'm not going to, you know, I've already used an action. I will try and scurry behind something, but it won't be covered, I assume. Okay. Um, and at this time, this, this figure says, uh, in a language that none of you understand, uh, says something to the two on her side um, and begins to walk off with Gundren in a hasty way. About that far. Um, and the drow that was holding on to the hostage uh, slits his throat uh, as he steps out of the way of this fireball, slits this dwarf's throat uh, and lets him drop to the ground uh, and says, kill the rest of them. Take the old man. Uh, and both of these two vanish. Uh, Mal, you don't see anything yet. Um, great. Cool, 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 cool. I love that. I think I will just prepare another action then. Okay. Um, so you're just rhetoric, wow, readying, if anything, uh, within your range. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's good, because as you do... Oops. I guess I should have done that before. That's okay. Um, as you do, this goblin runs at you. Uh, go ahead and make your attack. That definitely hits. Eight, nice little two-handed spear for a total of nine damage. Okay, not bad. You want to flavor your attack at all? Um, I think Mal's been pretty, um, like up until this point, hasn't had a spear on him, and then when we kind of stopped in the road, picked it up out of uh, kind of the rest of our... Uh, supplies and stuff out of there. It's a um, the spearhead of it. It's wrapped in like old cordage and things like that. But the spearhead itself is like lightly serrated. Like doesn't look like it's standard issue spear tip. Um, so I think just like having it in a ready pose, and then as the goblin is coming towards him, more uses the momentum of the goblin. So like takes a step forward, but lets him like impale himself on his spear. Okay. Um, yeah, and as this creature runs forward, uh, it is going to take an attack on you as well. Maybe. There's my chat. Um. That is a nat 20. I'm going to silvery barbs that. <laughs> thank you. Too. I'll give advantage to Mal. <laughs> Alright. That is a nine. Yeah. Nine misses. <laughs> um, as it goes to swing down on you. Um, Baka, do you want to flavor these silvery barbs at all? Um, yes. Uh, she'll, like, come up from behind the cart and reach her hand out. Um, uh, and she'll just say, feel the blight um, as, like, dark 
black uh, magical energy takes over and moves his, like, gives him enough pain to miss his attack as uh, he was going in for it. Okay. Awesome. I um, mean, it is actually... Is it? Double checking. Sorry. Uh, no, he's going to swing again. He attacks again. Maybe. My chat keeps disappearing. Um, for an 11, which I believe misses. Yes, that will miss me. Okay. Now it is Fania's turn. Uh, it should be Shadow. He has a higher dexterity than Because we have the same initiative, but he has a higher dex. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Oh. Shadow, if you want to go ahead. Uh, yeah, so seeing this, this goblin, like, dash in behind him while this is going on, um, just out of, like, frustration, like, kind of as, like, a like a turnstile, like a rotation, like plants a foot and then like swivels over and from this, this distance it, with all the bandages around his body and stuff like that, um, his his arm like like extends outward to uh, punch this goblin but it's like with all these bandages and like distance it's almost like like as if his hand's not even connected to the rest of his body because like the way it's extending out and just like whipping him with his fist. That's gonna be an I that's a nineteen to hit. That will hit. Okay. Um, oh that's uh that will be thirteen bludgeoning damage. Um, and as I do I knock him um, I knock him uh, back by the Okay, uh, you can actually claim your kill. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, so as I'm doing this, I, like, I whip around and, like, like I said, I, like, I hit him. And, like, as I, like, I crush him because of the, the height difference, I crush right into his face. And it, like, shatters the front of his head as he, like, is launched backwards into the dirt. All right, so he's launched backwards um, and dead. All right, any more dozers wanting to come in here and get on this action? Or are you going to make a bags of it all? He shouts out. All right. Uh, and Dr. Fage, did that fix the problem? All right. And Fania, it is your go. Um, drawing her hand from throwing out the silvery bars. Uh, in a panic hearing... Shadow call out his challenge. She's gonna look around to see if she can spot any other threats in the trees. Okay, uh, go ahead and make a perception check. Okay, uh, perception check. A fourteen. A fourteen. Um, you are able to see a goblin peeking a bow out. Right there in the tree line. Is that my action to do that? Um, I'll let it be your bonus action. Okay. Uh, over in the trees, to our left. Um, I don't think she can actually do anything that's worth while, unfortunately, without getting into combat range. Um, yeah, I'll just uh, I'll just uh, 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 dodge. Okay. That is both the yeah. And a goblin uh, pokes his head out from the brush uh, to the south side and is going to shoot a short bow. Um, he'll shoot it at Shadow. I'm clearly the biggest threat. <laughs> yes. Um, fifteen doesn't hit, right? Fifteen does not hit. As this arrow goes whizzing past you, uh, which, with which uh, which goblin did this? This one uh, to the south. Yeah. So all he he effectively did was then give me uh, 
place to turn my attention as my neck snaps towards him. Very cool. Um, and... Move past him. And another one pierces his head out of the shadows. And is firing a arrow at... Uh, that'll also be at shadow. Can I just click... I can. Oops, that was wrong. Um, a 15... No, that was the old one. Uh, a 19. 19 hits. 19 will hit. I turned my attention uh, in one direction, leaning my back. <laughs> Uh, if it's going to let me attack. Okay, I'm rolling again. Except I'm not rolling again. Okay. Uh, and does uh, six piercing damage to you as this arrow uh, pierces through your shoulder as your attention was drawn to the goblin uh, south of you. And all of you begin to hear this uh, thudding coming from the northern side is the for the northern side of the forest as uh, the trees begin to snap and branches begin to break as this giant spider comes out from the north side of uh, your position uh, and begins to make its way skittering down this cliffside uh, and grabs Sildar and its mandibles uh, do they have mandibles is that what they're called Whatever they're called. Uh, and begins to move back as Sildar is now being carried by this giant spider. Um, we got another goblin that will fire at Shadow. Um... Does an 11 hit? No. Does not. Why did I even ask? I already knew it didn't. Uh, I think cool. Getting shot in the back, <laughs> I think getting shot in the back uh, made me realize that I foolishly left my... So, like, as soon as like, that happens and I see the arrow whizzing, I just, like, <laughs> block it with the shield so it flies upwards. Okay. Uh, so I don't know how to get rid of them. <laughs> uh, it's under... I yeah, I can. I think it's your measurement controls. So let me see. There you go. I think. Did that remove it? Yeah, they're gone. Okay, so on your left side, the ruler, the little uh, 90 degree angle ruler, if you go to the bottom of that and click clear templates, you can do it that way. You can also use those for, you know, measuring out any cones or rectangles, square, whatever. Yeah, I don't either. Um. The delete oh, really? button, it says on the, uh, if you hover over it, it says the delete button should delete the, the stuff. So I think if you select it, <coughs> it's going to delete them, I don't know. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, and back at the top of the order, Amaris. I don't know what to do, I don't know what to do, um, um, uh. She will firebolt the, <laughs> The insect. Uh, um, and due to the height rules, this will be at a minus two since it is above you. And just for you guys in general, it's always two for either height advantage or disadvantage for height. Not rolling at advantage or disadvantage, just the plus or minus two. Keep that one simple. Wait, I'm sorry. I'm looking at my spells. What am I doing? Uh <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> I will... I kind of want to sleep. Okay, I'm gonna cast sleep. Okay. And Where? Why are you casting sleep? Uh, right. I don't want to get 
him. If I put it here, will that get our our man? <laughs> um. So correct me if I'm wrong. You're gonna roll five d eight, and affect the creatures. Uh, blah 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 blah. An ascending order of their current hit points. Hit points. Ignoring unconscious creatures. Starting with the creature has the lowest hit points. Each creature affected by the spell f uh, falls unconscious. So, yes, you would. You would hit. Um, yeah. If you want to try it. Okay. 5d8. I don't have enough, enough dice for that. <laughs> so I'm just going to do this. <laughs> uh, 20? <laughs> <laughs> Not bad. Okay, so... Where's the things? Not that. Not that. Sorry, I'm still learning Foundry a little bit. Uh, there they are. Uh, so... This... So both of the goblins fall asleep, essentially. Uh, if you guys want to start thinking about your turns. Uh, there it is. Nighty night. Oops, not that. Uh, but the uh, giant spider kind of fumbles for a second, uh, but is able to shake it off uh, as the rest is not enough to cover how many hit points the spider has. And... Is that all you, uh, you got? Mm. Yeah, I don't think at level one. Yeah, all these are actions. Yeah, that's it. Alright. Mal, it is your turn. Um, we're gonna make bad decisions <laughs> as Mal, trying to be a hero, runs up to the giant spider. And I'm going to make an attack with my spear to start with, with advantage. Okay. Um, that's a 24 to hit. That will hit. For, dang, 10 piercing damage. Okay. And then I will take a bonus action to do an unarmed strike. That's a dirty 20 to hit. All right. Or eight damage. Okay. Thrusting his spear up into the thorax of the spider. I always forget spider in here. Um, and then swinging around with a palm strike into one of the legs, trying to disable this spider, carrying off our new friend. All right. Uh, Fania. Uh, Shadow can go first. Oh yeah, right. Shadow. Um, so I know you, you referenced it once in the chat. What, so, what is the plus two, minus two height stuff? So it's just if, uh, whoever has height advantage or disadvantage. So if you were to make a range attack against someone who is higher than you, uh, you would essentially just get minus two to that roll. Oh, and I, okay. I'll just keep it at that because I, I don't want to get into, oh, this person's 20 feet high and, you know, that kind of stuff, so. Okay. Um, well, seeing that Mal went for the spider, uh, I'm just going to make sure this goblin is uh, sort of, like, out of the way. So I, like, charge forward and then I, like, like put out, like, a like a hook just to, like, right in the head. Um, that might not do it. That is a... 15. A 15 just hits. Alright. Uh, that'll be 8 bludgeoning damage, and I'll knock him. Uh, I'm going to knock him back into the shrubberies. Okay. Uh, go ahead and claim your kill. Oh, again. Bam! Again, so all I can do, I do this like whip 
uh, like going around. Um, I guess I want to do this. I like whip, so like I hit him from like the side of the head, so it, like bashes in right where his ear is, and you can just like see him completely like rattled in that moment as he drops limp and then is like flung into like that mini cliffside. Um, and then bonus action, I'm going to. Uh, What's it called? <laughs> Second wind. Got ten. Mmm, that's a really nice roll. Got some high rollers tonight. <laughs> uh, cool. Uh, that's all you got, right? Yeah, yeah. Bania, it is your turn. She is once again going to call on the forest for aid. Uh... Raising her hand and uh, clutching it closed, she will use Entangle. Uh, five, uh, 20 across there and 20 up. So the goblin that is asleep will instantly fail because he's technically unconscious. So he is restrained. And then the spider has to make a strength saving throw or be restrained. It has to beat a 14. That was a nat one, so the spider is now oh, no. restrained. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, so people have advantage on attacks against it. It has disadvantage on attacks against others, and it has to use an action to try and break out. If it wants okay. to try and break out. All right. Uh, anything else? Because <laughs> that side seems to be safe now. And that is her turn. All right. Uh... Uh, remind me rules for sleeping. They just stay asleep, or do they make a save for it? Yeah, they're they're asleep for one minute. Gotcha. Uh, I think I think if the, they get hit, they have a chance to wake up uh, or something like that. If they're yeah, if they take damage, they wake up, or if someone else takes an action. Gotcha. Okay. Amaris, it is your turn. <clears throat> I will be... Didn't realize this was a cantrip. Mind Sliver onto the spider. All right. Uh, it is a DC 14 intelligence. All right. Um, it got a... That is not what it rolled. But it says it in the chat, so I'm going to go with it. Uh, it rolled a 7. Oh. No more. How much was it? Uh, I'm rolling it. Oh. Six. Six. Wow. Uh, and then, and then mind sliver. Isn't that the one where their next save they roll one d four less? Yes. One d four less. It is. Uh, it is a cool cantrip. Uh, sorry, it was a six, right? My yes. Brain, six damage. My brain is slowing down. <laughs> um, cool. Uh, and I apologize. I actually accidentally skipped the giant spider, so I'm gonna have the giant spider go now because I think I toggled the visibility on it. So sorry. Um, I could. Um, it is going to turn around and bite at Mal. Do, do. Attack, disadvantage. Uh, a 14 does not hit. Nope. Just dip diving and dodging out of the way. Cool. Uh, so it turns around and snaps at you uh, and does not hit you. And let me make sure I can't do anything else. 
No, I think you guys got it pretty locked down right now. Pretty locked down. Such a good smell. Hey, I love when this tank goes out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, Those Mal. really cool when they work. <laughs> <laughs> They're the worst and should be banned when they fail. <laughs> Sorry, Mal, it is your turn. Oh, sorry, it's me. Um, great. I'm going to take advantage of the spider being all tied up in the nasty vines. And take advantage of spear attack. Ooh. Um, good thing I had advantage on that. Um, that's a 15. A 15 does hit. That is nine piercing damage. All right. And I'll take a bonus action for 21 to hit. Ooh, for nine bullets. All right. How do you kill this spider? Ooh. <laughs> um, I think. Mal knocks out its other front leg first, so its uh, head is forced to, again, kind of uh, become lower, and then just uh, driving up from underneath, uh, splitting uh, the spider right in between all of its nasty little eyes um, as the spear jumps out from the top of its head. Very cool. All right, Shadow. Uh, seeing the spider uh, go down. This is this is this the is this uh, the black squares are the entangled. Black square. Okay, the other one. Was Only the, the one goblin is, and he's on the outside. Yeah. They're both asleep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just wanted to make sure. So I'm gonna walk over uh, to the sleeping goblin, and I'm going to stomp down on his head. Uh, I'm getting brutal session one. Rude. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is a sixteen. Uh, yeah. Did you roll at advantage too, right? Yeah. 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 Sixteen hits. Okay, that is going to be twelve hits. All right. Uh, <laughs> how do you kill this goblin? <laughs> yeah, like I said, I just go over there. I walk over and I just completely stomp down, and his head uh, uh, does not resist my foot as I plumb it through it. And I'll scrape off his brain onto the nearby uh, shrubbery as if it was like dog. <laughs> Yum. Yum. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Alright, Fania. Um, I am scared and alone. Uh, I'm going to, for the sake of it, do another perception check and look in the forest behind me and make sure nothing else is coming up to us. Uh, okay. Uh, roll perception. <laughs> natural 20? <laughs> what a good use of a natural 20 for 24. Yeah, you don't you don't see anything behind you. I think we're safe now. Um, but our friend is gone. Uh, take an action to dodge. I, I mean, that guy, it's, it's just that guy. So. Alright. Is that all you got? All, everything you're doing? Yep, yep, yep. That's all I got. Okay. Uh, Mars. Ooh, ooh, wait, I got this one. I got this one. Uh, I will. Firebolt. Fire. Okay, so this is a flat roll because it is on the ground and this is a ranged attack. That was at disadvantage. Or sorry, no, that's flat roll. Uh, dirty 20 will hit. <laughs> you made me panic. I was like, oh, no, no, that was my fault. <laughs> my fault. Wow. How do you kill this goblin? <laughs> As Amaris is excited and giddy to get her firebolt off flame fizzes in between her fingertips as she 
literally just chucks <laughs> a fireball at that goblin. Alright. And that leads us out of combat, at least. So we'll go ahead and change some of this stuff really quick. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. All right, so uh, that leads us out of combat here as Gundren is what seems, excuse me, willingly led off uh, by this mysterious figure. And uh, you guys do find Sildar on the ground uh, underneath this giant spider. Uh, thankfully still alive, but very injured as well. Um, and that is where we will end our session for tonight. So thank you very, uh, thank you very much for joining us and, uh, be sure to check out my players at their socials, uh, check out the IDLs, check out Swindler's Den. Um, uh, great, great channels, great, um, podcast shows, just a lot of great stuff going on. So go check them out and thank you very much for joining us.